What's up, Sean Fagan here from Muay Thai Guy, along with Paul the Reaper Banashik, and today we're going over how to defeat giant dudes like him. All right, first things first, when fighting a tall opponent, you're gonna have to be ready to take a couple hits in order to give a couple hits, all right? Obviously, you wanna minimize the damage, and in order to do that, you need to use your hands to set it up and cover distance, okay? So, when I'm fighting someone like him, he obviously has longer arms and legs than me, and so his range and distancing with his strikes is much different than mine, okay? Right here, I'm in his range. He can hit me with the kicks or punches, okay? But I can't hit him. So in order to cover my distance, I need to kind of disguise it. I can't just move in, all right? Otherwise, I'm just gonna get smashed in the face or kicked in the legs. I need to move in with a purpose. And usually, it helps if I throw some type of combinations or fakes or whatever, right? So what I'm gonna do is, in order to cover this distance, I'm gonna come in throwing some type of hand combination and then I can finish it off with a kick or knee or I can even go inside with the clinch, okay? So I wanna make sure no matter what, when I'm fighting him, I'm moving, I'm faking, I'm getting him to react, and so this way I can cover the distance. If I'm not moving and I'm just kind of just stepping in like this, it'd be really easy for him to do whatever he wants to me, okay? So I need to be faking, I need to be throwing, I need to be angling off, I need to be defending, I need to be keeping my head moving off the center line as well. The second thing you need to focus on is ring generalship and making sure you're controlling the ring and trying to keep him in the corner or up against the ropes where his range isn't going to be as effective. So obviously we're not in a ring. We could have filled this in the ring. We fucked up though. So we're just going to use the back of the ring right here, okay? So if I'm fighting him, the idea is I'm going to use those combinations and fakes to keep him on his back foot and drive him back. So I can be faking, faking, and moving and kind of getting him back against the ropes. Okay? Now, the ties are really good at using their, their teeth to keep me off. And so in order to make him lose his balance, I need to fake my in and out motion. This way, if I'm faking in and out, ideally he'll throw some type of combination. I can make him miss, and then I can come back in and throw my own type of combination. Okay? So I'm going to fake. He's going to throw something. He's going to lose his balance. You see how after he threw the teeth, he kind of fell forward like this? That's a perfect opportunity for me to throw a combination, okay? Another thing I want to consider, especially when I have him up against the ropes, is I want to keep on the inside, so this way he doesn't have the, the full extension on his punches or his kicks. Because if I'm on, on the outside here, he has full extension, and that's where the full power comes from, okay? Whereas if on the inside, it's going to be a little bit harder for him because he's going to be a little bit more crowded, where I have a little bit more power here, because I have shorter arms and shorter legs that can actually rotate through, okay? But in order to cover this distance, like I said before, I might need to take a couple punches, I need to pressure him forward, I need to be throwing fakes and throwing combinations, this way I can cover this distance and move inside, okay? Another good thing to focus on is after I throw a combination, most of the time, whether you're fighting a tall opponent or the same size opponent, they're gonna counter right back. So after I throw a combination, I need to be ready and either get out of range or try to stiff form or jab out or teep out or have some type of counter movement so this way it stops him from trying to counter me. A couple more important concepts to consider when fighting a tall opponent is A, when I'm fighting him, obviously his head is a little bit farther away than his body. So his body is going to be a lot, a lot easier to attack than his head. His head he can just lean back a little bit. But if he leans his head back, his body is still in the same position. So I can fake to the head and then come to the body and I can really attack his body. And I like attacking the body regardless if he's a, a tall opponent or not because it can really add on later on in the fight and slow them down. Another thing to consider is his legs. His legs are closer to me than his head is as well. The head is hard when you're fighting a taller opponent because you tend to overextend and overreach. So if I'm, even, even if I'm faking to the head, all right, I still have his leg down here nice and low, that's still in range for me to kick. So attacking the body and attacking the legs is always a really good option. And lastly, kind of a more advanced movement, but not necessarily advanced if you know how to fight in both stances, but I guess it is advanced, is marching, right? So if I'm on the outside, what I like to do a lot is I kind of just march forward. And based off this, A, when I'm marching, I have a built-in defense right here to like check or teeth, okay? 
then also I can be in my opposite stance so I can angle off in this way as well. If I'm marching forward though, right, and now my left foot is forward, now I can throw a combination this way and angle off on the opposite side. So the march is really good because especially if we're playing it like with our hands and we're hand fighting as I'm marching forward, I can see where my openings are. And then based off this, I can either move to the side or if he has a small or a, a soft guard, I can come over top or I can even lift this guard up and attack his body as well. So I really like this marching forward uh, technique and I'll probably do another video on it in, in the future. But the reason this is so good is because I can cover distance really well here while also having a built-in defense and offense at the same time and having multiple options for what angles I want to cut, whether he's tall or not. So that's how I like to fight a taller fighter. I would love to hear your thoughts on how you fight giants like Paul because this is one of the most common questions I get, so I figured I'd make a video out of it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe if you like these type of videos. Check out Paul's channel as well, and we'll see you in the next video.